Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem integer to Roman. Recently we solved the opposite problem, Roman to integer. I'll link to that uh, somewhere in the top right if you want to check out that solution. It's a pretty similar problem. In this case though, we are given some integer value. For example, maybe we're given the integer 9 and we want to convert it into the Roman numeral representation of that number. In this case, that happens to be x before that x comes an i so based on this table that they conveniently gave us x is the number for 10 and i is the number for 1 you know that's what these individually these letters represent those numbers but when you combine them they are 9 and why is that? Well, there's a rule in Roman numerals. You know, the straightforward explanation for how numbers work with Roman numerals is it goes largest to smallest, right? So if we wanted 1,500, uh, we'd put an M and then we'd put a D, right? This is 1,000, this is 500. If we wanted 2,500, we'd put two M's, right? M, M, and then a D for 500, right? This is 2,500. But there are some special rules where actually the smaller character, you know, the symbol with a smaller value can go before the symbol with a larger value. Uh, and it only works in a few specific cases. And those cases are described below with these three bullet points. So an I can go before a V, which is the number five. And if it does go before V, so if we did I V, that would be the number four. If I goes before X, that is the number nine. So it's a special case, right? And there's a few more special cases. An X can go before an L, and that will make the 50 turn into a 40. Or the X can go before a C, and that will make 100 turn into 90. And there's one more case here. C before D is 400. C before M is 900. So if we didn't have these special rules, the problem would be really easy because what we would do is, you know, given any number, let's say we're given the number 1,500, what we would do is first uh, divide this number N that we're given by m uh, and by m what we mean is a thousand because that's the numeral you know that's the value for m so we divide uh, 1500 by a thousand and what we would get is uh, we would do this with integer division and we'd round down so when you uh, divide this by a thousand we get 1.5 but we're going to round down to one this one tells us how many m's need to go in our result so we'd put one m in our resulting string now, if, if we, of course, if we had 2,500, right, this was 2,500, then we'd get two, and then we'd put two M's in our result. We pretty much continue this. Uh, once we've done the thousands place, uh, you know, we'll take this N and then mod it by a thousand to basically eliminate the thousands place, right? Because we don't need to look at that anymore. We don't care about that anymore. So by modding it by a thousand, now we get to... Uh, 500 is remaining, right? We already put one M in the output. Next, we want to see how many 500s go into it. So we uh, we go to the next Roman, uh, Roman symbol. And of course, the order that we do this does matter. We're going to start largest to smallest, right? Because that's how we build the output string. So then we're going to do the same thing with D, right? 500 divided by 500 is just going to be one. Uh, so then we can put one D in our output. So this is going to be the entire result because, uh, you know, if we take 500 now mod it by 500, we're going to get zero remaining. So we can basically stop, right? We've uh, found the result. Now, so this would be really easy if we didn't have these three special cases below. It would just be a while loop doing what I just described to you, where we iterate through all the symbols from largest all the way to the smallest. The only complication that these special cases uh, give us is that we have some special rules that we're going to insert into this list of symbols. Basically, for our purpose of this function, this table is incomplete, right? Because we have some rules down here that describe to us that CM is 900 and CD is 400. And there's a couple more rules. So IX is 9, IV is 
four. And remember how we do need to iterate through these in the correct order, like from largest to smallest. So basically to this table, we're gonna be inserting this 900 in between these two. We're gonna take this 400 symbol, insert it between these two, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. This 90 is gonna go in between these two because we wanna maintain the order. We want to iterate through them um, largest to smallest. And so once we have made that modification to this table and we have the correct table, then the algorithm is pretty straightforward, right? We'll just do the entire uh, while loop stuff that I described uh, previously. We're going to divide this and then mod it just to know how many of these characters we need to have in our output. And, you know, let's say we just had the number 900 as the input, right? What would we do? We'd first try dividing it by M by 1,000, right? This divided by 1,000 is going to be zero, right? That tells us that zero M characters are going to go in our result. Next, we wouldn't try this number. We wouldn't try D for 500. Next, what we would try is this because CM is another way of writing 900, so next we would try dividing this by 900. We'd see that it'd be one. So that means we need to add one occurrence of this string. It's not a single symbol this time. So this string CM is gonna go in our output. And then we'd continue to build that output string, the Roman representation of whatever integer that we're given. So that's the entire idea. Now we can get into the code. Okay, so now let's get into the code. As you can see, I've pretty much you know, completed this entire function. This is really the hard part, writing out this entire table. I wrote it as a list of smaller lists, right? A nested list where each list is just a pair of the Roman string mapped to the integer. The reason I did it with a uh, list instead of a hash map is because we do need to do this in the correct order. In this case, it's sorted in ascending order. So we're gonna iterate through this list in reverse order. So let's build our result, which is gonna be a string. And then let's iterate through this list in reverse order. We're going through a pair of values, the symbol and the value. And we'll iterate through this in reverse order. We can do that like this in Python. And now we're actually gonna be processing this. So we have some number that we're given, right? We wanna know, uh, does the current value that we're at, uh, you know, whatever symbol it happens to be, does it divide this value? If this is zero, maybe we were given an integer of 400 and we're trying to divide it by a thousand. Uh, this is integer division in Python, by the way. If we're trying to divide it by a thousand, we're gonna get zero. That means that this symbol is not actually gonna go in the result. But if it's not zero, if it's greater than zero, then that symbol is gonna go in the result, which is why we have an if statement here. So if it does go in the result, we wanna know how many times is it gonna go in the result. That can be our count. So num divided by val, just doing the exact same thing again. Maybe it's one, maybe it's two, maybe it's three, who knows. Whatever it is, we're gonna store it in count. So that's gonna tell us how many times we wanna add this symbol to the result. In Python, you can actually take a string that's what sim, sim is gonna be. Sim is gonna be whatever that string is, i, i, v, whatever. And you can multiply it by an integer, in this case, count. And what that'll do is that'll just basically take this string and create this many copies of it and then append them together. So it works out conveniently for us. We want maybe two copies of this string and we wanna take those copies and then add it to the result. So we can do that just like this. And last but not least, we want to potentially update this number, right? If it was maybe 1400 and we, uh, you know, we counted, okay, there's, we wanna divide it by a thousand, right? There's 1000 here. Next, we wanna mod this by a thousand because we don't care about the thousands place anymore. We just want the remainder. So that would set the remainder to 400. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the num, mod it by, uh, whatever value that we divided it by previously and then set that equal to itself so that we can use the updated value in the next iteration of the loop. And yeah, that's the entire solution, uh, pretty short. Then we can go ahead and return the result. The hardest part is just typing out this entire table. Let's run it to make sure that it works though. And as you can see on the left, yeah, it works and it's pretty efficient. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel if you would like. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.